Senate Bill 1317, which is um, open enrollment. And um, I am grateful for an opportunity to talk about this a little bit. For me, this started with the events of this summer when we all took a long, hard look at equity and the lack of equity that existed in our system. And um, all of the reading that I did spoke to that pivoting, especially generational poverty and inequity, hinging on a couple of very important variables. One was education, and obviously we know the other was the opportunity to buy a home. Education, um, to me, both of those are incredibly important as a physician and somebody who's been involved in population health for a long time, the social determinants of health, to me, are the means by which we ensure everybody has access to the American dream. If you don't have the tools by which to grow and seek opportunity, we are failing you. Um, this summer, in November, a report came out of VCU that talked about school segregation by boundary line. And that fit very much into my consideration of how do we adjust for the generational disadvantages that we're seeing. I've long been overwhelmed and horrified by the data that came out of the zip code um, data from VCU where they looked at localities and determined that if you were born into one zip code, you died 20 years sooner than if you were born into another. And that was very much a product of the opportunity you had to thrive there, including education. And let me get to one of my documents, if I may, Madam Chairman. When we look at school segregation by boundary line, which was published from VCU in 2020, um, some particular quotes that I would like to reference that framed this piece of legislation are, number one, segregation between schools in the same division contributes to half or more of all multiracial school segregation in Virginia's metropolitan regions, including Central Virginia, 56%, Tidewater, 50%, and Northern Virginia. So that's the school districts in the same locality governed by the same school board. Further, they, the, as they make recommendations in this report, they say that our recommendations are generally geared towards state policymakers. The recommendations call for extensive use of to amplify awareness about school segregation, training, research, data collection. We also recommend they develop a definition, et cetera. So, Madam Chairman, um, as I looked at all of those and I considered options, I, I, I wonder why we have school divisions that are developed essentially by zip code when we have very clear scientific evidence that that is a disadvantage to those, those children who have all the potential if they're given the opportunity. So um, my attempt to address that is Senate Bill 1317, which allows for open enrollment for children. Again, this, this report that I'm referencing from VCU said that the best benchmark to measure which ch kids were at disadvantage was free and total lunch designation. That was the best composite poverty measurement for children. And so this bill basically adds to the existing code for open enrollment that um, children who qualify for free and reduced lunch, their parents would be able to choose any school in the same locality school division for their child to go to. It fits into that legislation, so as we know, transportation is a challenge. They wouldn't require transportation. Right now, the existing code says that parents have to transport, but would give them a chance to, to um, choose better for their kids. You know, a lot of parents can move. They have the capacity to move to a good school district. That's a selling point for schools. Not all parents have that. And those are the parents that, of children that qualify for free and reduced lunch. And if we, if we trap them in with the same set of parameters that the system has created, they will not have a chance to break out of it. 